How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week 12, and I am still incredibly upset at what happened at the end of our last episode. If you don't remember, we were in the lead with the 92 overall guard, Christian Grimmel, with a visit upcoming in week 15. And somehow, Texas, on their visit, absolutely obliterated us. Bought him a, three Lamborghinis cash, and uh, he just decided to commit on the spot. So almost an entire season's worth of recruiting this kid goes down the drain. Uh, and Elliot Erdman, the other really good offensive lineman, commits to, I think it was Florida. So now all of a sudden, our class still looks like it has a chance to be really good, but just not nearly as much so as it was previously. A little bit disappointing, but that's where we're at. So we're going to go ahead and just give uh, some points to Caden Crawley and we'll give a few to Javante Gilmore. We are quite a ways behind uh, Illinois, but he's 73% well, he's locked. They haven't offered him a scholarship yet, so there is a chance that we could somehow swoop in there and steal him. Three guys ready for visit. Isaias Long, Joe Fox, and Desmond Causey. So we will go ahead and just schedule all of those, I guess, for the bye or if we can send them to the Maryland game, we will do that. Uh, we play Michigan State this week with Maryland as our final game of the season. Sitting at number four very much feels like we are going to make it into the playoff. But we have to make it through some mediocre opponents, including this Michigan State team. Four and five. Uh, they've got guys visiting, so we'll try to ruin their days. We are the higher. Oh, no, they're the higher overall team. Uh, we're both the same color. Things are weird. Both have Michigan in the name. It confused me for a second there, but yeah, just uh, C plus overall for us, a B minus for them, but we're better in every statistical category except for turnover differential. And who are of the Spartan played? Uh, let's see. They beat their FCS team, beat Boise State, lost to Louisiana Tech, beat a ranked Nebraska, beat Northwestern. And then they are kind of on a slide here. Loss at Wisconsin, loss against Indiana, loss against the number seven Michigan, and loss in overtime on the road at number 14 Ohio State. So, I don't know. I mean, their losses aren't terrible. They're not great either. The, the Louisiana Tech team that they lose to is 9-1. and one, But we will also be expecting to beat them. Uh, for us, uh, the one loss is just still the, the number one team in the country in Auburn. And we're, we're rooting for Auburn to win out. Hopefully, the Tigers can make it to the playoffs maybe we have a chance at revenge uh, i think that would be a nice fun storyline and a good chance for our seniors to uh you know go out on top uh but again playing at michigan state and then we host maryland next week and uh i mean four and five four and six they're not great teams you would think that we could beat them based on what we've done so far this season but you never know when that trap game is gonna sneak up and get you in another radical development on this season, our true freshman running back, RJ Rivera, uh, is leading the Heisman race. And I don't really understand how. Uh, he had two tackles, is what they say is special about him last week. Uh, that's kind of interesting. He has, let's see, less than 700 rushing yards and nine rushing touchdowns. He has less than 400 receiving yards and six receiving touchdowns. It's all on the kick return and punt return. He has uh, 671 kick return yards and two touchdowns there, and then 673 punt return yards and a touchdown. So I guess that's why he's uh, impressive to them. But I, I just I don't get it because it has to be all purpose yards because he is not uh, anywhere on the Walker list like he's at fifth. He's well behind 2,387 all-purpose yards and 19 total touchdowns. I guess is really impressive. Um, more touchdowns than any of these guys. But like, I mean, this, uh, we're going to have to play this guy. This uh, Maryland running back, 270 carries for almost 1,500 yards and 14 touchdowns is, I mean, that's pretty impressive. He probably deserves to win just a bunch of seniors, uh, a couple of juniors, but a lot of upperclassmen on this list and... As a true freshman, RJ's still pretty impressive, but I don't think he deserves to win the Heisman. Maybe they can call that uh, a payment for having those commits go elsewhere. Uh, we do have a couple of ranked games. USC plays at number 18, Tennessee. Uh, and we've got number 12, Georgia, playing at number 15, Army. Uh, Georgia just lost a close-ish game, two-touchdown game, to the number one team in the country in Auburn. So Auburn continues to roll. 
uh, Army plays Georgia. We've already seen those. Anything else? Iowa State and Oklahoma State. Uh, so there's some games, Penn State, Ohio State. But what's happening at the top is that uh, we wouldn't mind USC losing. And then potentially, do they play Stanford? It's a rivalry game, right? Uh, did they already play? No, they don't play each other. Well, they'll have to face off e against each other in the Pac-12 championship game. So as long as uh, both of them can take a loss, almost guarantee us a spot in the playoff even if we lose the conference because i think that we are, might be high enough to be able to sneak in with a at-large bid at this point i guess the easiest way to do it though is just to win on the field so 81 overall for michigan state with an 81 offense and an 83 defense uh so we'll just throw on the green pants white helmet here uh michigan state has some interesting stuff i think that we just want to change their helmet go to the throwback one no the the gruff sparty i like this helmet all too much so that's what we're gonna rock with for the spartans just try to keep it simple feels like it fits for michigan state as we take a look at the numbers they've got a bad defense uh the best thing that they do is stop the run but they still give up 182 rushing yards a game and then on offense the best thing they do is pass the ball and they're sub 200 there so things are interesting for us our defensive numbers have gone out of whack the past couple of weeks trying to score a bunch of points selling out for the xp that in the end, doesn't matter because Elliot Erdman and Christian Grimmel hate me. Uh, and our offensive numbers have really skyrocketed. So everything is uh, weird at this point. Some three stars visiting. Top players for them. And 87 overall linebackers injured. And then a uh, so wide receiver and a left tackle at the 86 mark. So they are slightly higher overall than us, which I guess tracks. But we are on hot streaks and we don't have injuries. A middle linebacker and an outside linebacker out for this game. That's certainly going to hurt their depth. Well, here we are, Spartan Stadium. Let's see what we can do. Not going to try to get cheesy with it today. We don't have a need to level up urgently anymore as Tails does fail today. But we're just going to play some normal football and try to hold these guys to as few points as possible. Well, the Heisman favorite, RJ Rivera, back. Not quite in the end zone. Two yard line, field in the football, no blocks in front of him, but a big spin move gets him out in space and RJ Rivera is off to the races. Can't quite cut it back inside. The fact that we got a 54 yard return there is impressive. And hey, maybe this is where his Heisman campaign begins. If you just looked at the fans in the stadium, you wouldn't know whose home game this was. They're wearing white, but so are we as we're gonna go triple option trying to wait to get the pitch off, and I tried to juke there. RJ just didn't do it. Yeah, he got three yards, though. I think for this game and probably next game against uh, Maryland, we are going to prioritize keeping Morty stay healthy, so trying to avoid letting him get hit too much. That's going to mean a big change from what we've seen the past few weeks, and lots of running the football. RJ keeping it going up the middle. Some great blocking for him that time. We're going to see if we can get him over 700, maybe even over 800 rushing yards today. We will need to pass at least a little bit, but the the less running we do, I think the better. Bentley keeping it here. Derek, the juke move works fantastically. I don't know what the defenders are doing there, but it's another first down for the offense. We'll go ahead and uh, get Maurice going a little bit here with a Chris Rutgers swing screen. See what the wide receivers have for us. Catching the ball. A lot of defenders in the area. He almost hit them all with the step back cheese. Got back to the line of scrimmage, though. I don't think I'm upset with the result of that play as we will go with the read option. Maurice Tate keeping it. And again, oh, I tried to slide down there. I hit the button. Maurice just, uh, I don't know, going against my commands there. Well, that gives us a third and six, and I don't know what to expect trying to pass the ball here. But we will be stepping back. B is wide open, getting it to Jeff Fontenot. Good completion at the very least i don't necessarily expect that on the second attempt but it's a fourth and one and i think we're gonna go for it uh we got a safety last game so that could be a good worst case scenario but we will see what we can do can we motion robertson inside just to get some extra blocking and we give it to rj rivera who gets his 10th rushing touchdown of the season that drive yeah for the most part belonged to him as we take a seven nothing lead early in this one and oh my goodness that's a huge upset Six and four Indiana beats number seven Michigan. Massive. The Wolverines take their second loss of the season. That'll probably knock them out of 
Uh, Big Ten title game contention, and it might knock him out of playoff contention. All the chaos that we can see is still incredibly useful for us as we are, you know, hoping that we can have space to take a loss. You know, we don't want to lose, but if a bunch of teams behind us lose, it'll give us a little bit of leeway. Spartans come out with the option on their first play and get two yards as the quarterback keeps it. Second and eight, kind of expecting a counter. It's going to be a handoff, but not a counter, and the space is too big. Michael Bozeman gets 15. Early, these guys trying to run the football, trying to find some success. There's the counter, and oh my gosh, the blocking's huge. Royal misses the tackle. Moore gets him out of bounds. Oh no. I said there was a chance at a trap game here. I didn't know how serious that was going to be. Play action. They pass over the middle. That's the best stop we've had in a few, and it still goes for four. And we got to bring another blitz here. Uh, I don't feel confident with the way this is going. Oh, thank you. Blitz works. We dropped him for a loss. Third and seven. Maybe a chance to breathe here for the defense. And we'll see what we can do. Expecting them to go to the air. They will. Stepping back. Throws it over the middle. It's caught, but it's short of the line to gain. I feel like I could see a field goal from here. It is the field goal team out. I don't know how good this kicker is. This is, what, a 60, 50 yarder? Uh, 50 yarder, and it's going to be a little bit more. Could be 55 if they continue to want to kick this after the false start. Punt team still out on the field. They do have uh, about a four mile an hour tailwind, so that's going to help out this kicker, but this won't be easy. It's up. It looks like it's going to be short, and RJ Rivera... Again, maybe on the Heisman campaign. How quick is number 30-something? Zoom in. RJ, oh, my goodness. They just hit those, you know, those Hot Wheels little, like, rubber boosters? They ran through a pair of those. Fielding that kick, I thought for sure we got the kick six and we were scoring a touchdown, but they came out of nowhere. RJ up the middle. Good handoff on the read option. Gets a six. Just feels like uh, he's just not quite quick enough sometimes. There's a lot of instances this season where I just thought we were going to be gone and it doesn't happen as he breaks the tackle. Too many guys in the area to score, but that's a good 26-yarder. And just five carries, he's amassed 49 yards in this game. Fantastic news. We'll come out in the eyes, stepping back to throw, and we'll throw a bad one to Brian Curtis. Maurice Tate kind of thought he was going to be more accurate than that, but I should maybe think better. And it's going to be a second down run to Lionel Goodwin. Third string running back. Going to get some playing here as the spin move. I don't think it was necessary, but it added some flair onto a really nice run. Coming out and just uh, letting the linemen do their thing. Derek Bentley's going to get this one up the middle. Trying to convert. He does so. Breaks some tackles and gets us inside the 15. So the second trip now into the red zone is we will step back looking to throw on the play action. I don't see it. Got the block. A kind of... <laughs> I should just ran. <laughs> Hello. What the decision-making there was. If there was a flow chart, it was a jumbled mess. But uh, here we are. Maurice Tate keeping it. This time, on kind of the designed read option, gets nine yards. I would prefer it if you guys didn't ask me any of the decision-making there. But now it's time for a little triple option. And Maurice is going to be able to walk into the end zone. That's touchdown number two of the game as we got one second left in this third quarter, or this first quarter. That's what it's called. You know you're in for a doozy when I don't even know what quarter we're in. <laughs> They're going to field this one at about the two. Napoleon trying to get down there. This is a good return for him. Good use of the time as well. They get 25 yards, but unfortunately, as this first quarter comes to a close, it's 14-0. Really not looking all that good. We'll see what their offense can do, though. Just going to go with a little cover one. Five-man rush. Expecting them to run the football early in this one. But no. Oh, it's intercepted. He had his guy open, but Moore comes down with it. That's going to be a pick six of the defense getting involved early in the half. Early in the second quarter. Mike Moore, I think, was out of position. The quarterback just made a bad throw straight to him. And he actually held on to it, which is the more incredible thing in my eyes. So I was wondering what the offense could do, and it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot. They're going to get another kickoff here, and they'll get another attempt at it, but down three touchdowns. It's not looking good. There's a flag. I feel like this could be a face mask. A holding. Well, things continue to get worse for Sparty. 
Trips left as we're coming out bringing a big blitz. They're at the 11. If we can get them in the backfield, it would be huge. Whitaker doesn't get them in the backfield, but stops that from becoming a big one. Felt to me like Michael Bozeman could have been there. Try to bring some more pressure. They will step back to throw. Quarterback's going to take the sack. That gets him to the five. Just spent too long in the pocket there. Third and 15. Trips left again. Could we get the sack? Try to pressure these guys. Try to get Smith as much time as possible to get to the quarterback who's in the end zone. And he falls down, but he's at the goal line, does it? Oh, the forward progress saved him. Thought we had a sack for the second game in a row, but just not quite the case as he just eked the ball past before getting shoved backwards. And if there was ever a chance that you were going to block a punt, this would be it. No. Fourth and 21, punting out of the back of the, their own end zone. Trying to bring the pressure, and we got it! We blocked the punt! It's a safety! I have never done that in my life in this game! He had no space to work with, and we just got in there, tackled him before he could even get the punt away! I will say, video games uh, prevented that from becoming a touchdown, because that ball's clearly out of his hands. But because the game says he still has possession, uh, whoop! Just right back into him. <laughs> Either that or he's got a uh, really good hand-eye coordination. Man, that is a lot of fun. Very excited that that actually happened. I have never done that. I've never seen it. RJ Rivera gets a couple more all-purpose yards on that free return. And with the offense coming back out onto the field, we are scoring quick in this game. Not really intentional. Uh, didn't, didn't come out here expecting to just obliterate these guys, but... It's working really well for us so far as RJ is up to 65 yards on just six carries. Well, I've called a play action pass here. We'll see what Maurice can do. Why over the middle was open. <laughs> he threw it right at 56. Okay, he's not ready to pass yet. Let's go with something that potentially could work. A little mid screen to Jody Gentry. He's covered. He can't even hold on to it. Just good coverage there. Well, we've done well with this before, just barely getting the slip screen off, but uh, RJ didn't run the right route there. That was weird. I couldn't, things got hot routed out of position. That's going to make it fourth and 10, but I'm not going to punt the ball today. Uh, we might give them good field position, but we'll try not to. A little triple option. RJ, or Maurice Tate, sorry, keeping it and just finding the blocking. Jive stays alive there. I don't think that uh, Michigan State necessarily expected that. They certainly weren't expecting the counter as it worked tremendously. And RJ just going towards the corner, trying to outrun people as well as we can. That's good for seven more. He's certainly been having a very successful day at the office so far as this one's just up the middle. Small chunk, uh, three yards on the play. Pretty bad for us, all things considered. <laughs> what it does, though is it gives us a first down and it sets us up for a play action here. Eh, maybe risky expecting Maurice Tate to complete it. Right bumper was open. Yeah. Oh, that's frustrating. Well, let's just run the football. Try to get more our second yard or second down yards. I can't speak at the moment. But uh, I mean, it only worked for two there and now it's third and very long. It's a cold day, which typically doesn't lend itself to us playing well, I feel like. But on this third down, we will try the slip screen. And they just covered it really well. Loss of four. The only good positive there is uh, that it's a completion for Maurice State, who's now three of nine for a net one yard. Unfortunately, what that means is that uh, we're going to go for it on fourth down, but we're kind of looking just to scramble with Maurice outside the pocket. A is wide open. No way that he gets that there, right? Brian Curtis actually was relatively close. Turnover on downs. Maybe should have kicked the field goal, but I wanted to go for it. We went for it earlier. No reason not to go for it there. Defense, though, who knows? Maybe they get another safety for us. When I threw that pass up, I did legitimately think that Brian Curtis was going to get past this man and be open, but that wasn't the case, unfortunately. Is this one? It's a run out to the left. Stopped after a gain of two. I'm finding it hard to guess what Michigan State's going to do with their offense because it's been such a mix of passing and running. So we're there to stop the quick pass to the fullback. And that quickly gives us a third and eight. So we'll see maybe if we can get some pressure here, get to this guy in the backfield all the time in the world. He finds his man, J.R. Hollis, makes the kind of diving one-handed grab. Pass was too far out in front as they'll go five wide now. And again, over the middle, somebody's open. I need that cover one robber just can't get to it in the hurry up. 
Hopefully just putting a little bit of pressure over the middle of the field can kind of help us, but I certainly not feeling confident. Second and two, expecting the pass. They do step back and look at that. Over the middle, he dropped it. Oh, we got a little bit lucky on that one. I got to feel like this one is going to the running back. It's an option. We hit the quarterback. He can't pitch it away. Oh, in real life, I think he might have tried to force that one and it would have worked, but not in the game. And now it's fourth and five with a big decision for Michigan State. Your uh, Spartan supporter might be a little bit disappointed. They are electing to punt this one away. They could fake it, but I don't expect it inside their own 50. Uh, they are burning the clock, though. Uh, I guess we're going to let them know. Too late to take the timeout. If I was going to uh, try and block it, we would have been perfect because we wouldn't have known exactly when the ball would have been snapped. But not the case as we just get another chance to return and don't really try to cheese it up too much just go north we get our 10 yards and now with uh 55 seconds and uh, uh 65 or so yards to go we'll see what we can do with a quarterback who has not really passed the ball accurately accurately at all but finds chris rutger so that's a solid little wheel route don't exactly know what it means for us with maurice in the game but uh we just got to continue to try to throw B's open. Jody Gentry comes down with it, and we'll take our first time out. I think maybe we've seen enough. We'll see what they play here. As Chris Rucker, oh, we couldn't get it off. Chris Rucker was open for a touchdown. Good sack, good pressure. He had the one-on-one. -on -one. He was about a half step in front of his man, and being the quickest player on the team, kind of had hopes that he would just be able to outrun him. But they get to us with the blitz. They get the sack, and here again, I just, uh, I mean, can RJ come down with it? RJ came down with it. He's into the end zone. That was a great pass for Maury State. And unlike you would typically see in this game, number 42, the defensive back for Michigan State, didn't just instantly turn around to come stop it. Huge touchdown. So it's uh, 30 to nothing. 30 seconds and two timeouts left for Michigan State. What can the Spartans do? If anything, I'm going to try to strip the ball. Doesn't work. Good job from Napoleon getting the tackle anyways. Almost certainly expecting the pass as they do have twins on each side. 27 seconds now to work with. Pressure not going to get there. Green. Oh. Oh. Almost was able to use them into position. They are now going to run the ball. They're burning the play clock, which typically means they run the football. And he's going to get tripped up by his own man. And then they take their time out. It's uh, a little bit of a shame how easy it is to predict what the AI is going to do near the half sometimes. This one's going to be a run. Didn't expect that, to be honest, to counter. They got the first down. That'll stop the clock. And now it's back into the hurry up where we can almost <laughs> obviously expect a pass. Uh, 10 seconds left. Maybe they won't. Uh, they do. Stepping back. Could be picked off. Napoleon can't come down with it, but he gets the deflection. 209 total yards for us to there. 83 but will it be enough? Trying to bring some pressure on these guys. Trying not to get burned deep. Quarterback sheds one tackle. And then gets it away while he's getting sacked. They almost got the interception there. As we could probably expect this to be a Hail Mary. I didn't come out in any sort of prevent. So hopefully we don't get torched. As they will step back. Quarterback's going to have his man open. But again, hit is hitting as he's thrown. Back-to-back -back plays. That'll let the clock expire. We don't give up any points. We don't give up any extra yards. And it's 30 to nothing heading into the locker rooms. Feeling very, very confident. The defense will have to come out first to start the third quarter. But the way they've been playing, I certainly have no worries about what they're going to be able to do. A blocked punt. The special team's doing really well. The defense getting them into that position is a miracle. Defense has a pick six. Things are looking really good for this game. I mean, I don't want to say we could shut these guys out because... I know what happens at the end of games for us, but who knows? Maybe we can play the whole 60 minutes today. I guess we'll find out. We can go ahead and have Clark boot this one away. See what uh, number 11 Parker, no, Thompson can do as we'll gun down the field. Again, trying to strip the football here. You know, kind of feel like maybe your return man won't be the best at carrying. So we're going to try to start creating some turnovers there. Four wide receivers in formation for these guys, but uh, I got to feel like they are going to run the football. No, coming out, passing the football, and it's Logan getting beat. Ooh, bad matchup there. No corner routes. 
uh, to the wide receiver. Has it working pretty well. Pressure was coming. Wide open gap for the pressure to get there, but we can't get there in time, so it's another completion. Just, uh, I feel like every single time uh, we come into a second half, this is what happens. Quarterback all the time in the world throws one deep, and it's caught by Hollis. Oh, I thought Green had it for sure, but he comes down with it. Absolutely bosses him. And just like that, to, their, to the 14-yard line. Uh, again, I don't think I should be surprised, but it never fails to surprise me at the same time because I know exactly what our team does in the second half. A lot of times in football, you hear about uh, second half teams, but we're the complete opposite. Just a first half team where we can't do anything in the second two quarters or the final two quarters. So these guys down 30 points coming out firing. And we're going to try to potentially bring some pressure. Feels like they could keep it. Quarterback has it, and we hit him for a loss of four. Fourth and eight. Curious to see if they go for the field goal. Or if we'll still have a chance to keep the shutout alive. And it is the field goal formation. So we're going to try to block this one. Probably get uh, a penalty. RJ, no, way out of position. Kick is up. Kick is good. Shutout off the board. They get three. Just, uh, I mean, defense got torched can't really expect to shut every team out but you can't expect to not give up huge plays like four plays in a row that's just a little bit too much as rj rivera well he's gonna answer back 53 can't get it they have some really quick guys 57 all-purpose yards for him but not a touchdown there's no chance that this one works we're gonna try it again we've tried it a few times uh the flea flicker <laughs> fumbled the ball <laughs> I want the play to work so bad, and it never has sacked for a loss of 10. I'm going to be honest, I just don't have the confidence to heave it up immediately like you need on that play. So we get burned as Chris Rutger just burned his man. Oh, please get the good pass. He comes down with it. Unfortunately, he went out of bounds. I might have been able to wait another second or two to let that one get deeper, but the further the throw, the less accurate Maurice is going to be. So we make up for it on the second attempt going deep. And that's got us inside the red zone with a first and 10. RJ Rivera getting the handoff on the read option, but not getting any blocks. So just to gain a two. Maybe we can get some blocks if these guys are out of position. RJ, no. Tackled from behind. You know, I, I think that sometimes the offensive line just doesn't try hard enough. Well, they're able to bring the pressure successfully. That gives us a third and 11. We'll see what we can do. Not feeling confident. Just kind of looking for the curls. I don't see anybody who's going to be open. But we have Maurice Tate. And that was very mid. Not a not a good play. I don't care if it's a fourth and seven here. We're going to go for it. <laughs> we're not kicking field goals today. Uh, sorry, Clark or whoever our kicker actually is. But that's not how we're doing it. Maurice Tate. I said we were going to let him take a lot of shots. But fourth and seven from the seven. We're going to let him drop the shoulder and get into the end zone. Uh, that play worked well. Ooh, this could be huge. Number two, Stanford losing by two touchdowns to Cal in the big game in the fourth quarter. And, uh, well, that could really help us as we are back up to, well, now I guess now it's a 34-point lead. So they score three, we score seven. And Archie Rivera down there getting his tackle broken, but there's a flag down, and this one's probably coming back. Clipping on their guys gives us great field position for the defense to work with. They're at the 14. Who knows? Maybe a chance at another safety. Pressure getting to the quarterback. Great throw. An absolute dart to Drew Thompson who holds onto it through the contact. Something about our secondary right now is just getting torched. I'm, I can't even get pressure on this quarterback. Uh, right guard too good. Right tackle too good. Full right side of the line. We do get the sack as he tries to scramble, though. And on the second down, five wide. Trying to bring pressure. Whitfield gets there, but they've got a man wide open. Just running a nice under out there, and Reggie's got 12. They are still on the five wide. It could be a draw from this quarterback. You never can count that out. Or it can just be the exact same play. Man, Reggie took a big shot, but he got the first down. They're just going to keep passing it. I legitimately can't get pressure. Smith getting obliterated they have guys open all over the field can we do anything to stop them <laughs> it's not feeling like it they have their guy running a whip route they've got guys running routes literally wide open all over the field 
Is it just me or is this kind of absurd? And he keeps throwing to the right side as well. Nothing, nothing left. There's his man open. We have uh, an aggressive zone turned on, but we're just sitting too far back. All of this happening in the hurry up and we can't get a single pressure on this quarterback. He's just kind of burning us. So we'll try to use her uh, safety here. They go over the middle. It's complete. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? That'll serve him right. You just injured your best wide receiver. Goodness gracious. That's the only way to get them out of the hurry up. And now we have to deal with our second string being in. And oh, we jumped, but so did they. So that'll back him up five. Ah, we got lucky. Luckily for them, just a strained peck for Hollis, the wide receiver who is torching us. And second, second and six was expecting the... Uh, run but they go to the air and somehow we're there to cover it so they will lose a yard well maybe we can get a an actual stop here they probably kick another field goal if we hold them just based off of what we saw last time is trying to wait quarterback gets hit and then throws one up that i don't know how he threw that good of a dart somehow of course we dropped the interception <laughs> they are gonna go field goal formation here so that's a little bit of a shame Again, I might be trying to jump this snap, but we didn't get it. So, kicks up. Kicks good. Uh, I expect them to decline this. We were offside. Bad attempt at a jump. I'll admit it. Didn't really commit. RJ gets called for it, but they, yeah, they decline. They take their points. I'm going to just go ahead and watch RJ try and return this one. 37 to 6. 31 point lead late in the third. I got to be honest, we might be burning the clock here. I wanted all the XP and all the points in the last couple games, but this game, I'm just trying to get through it, trying to make sure that we get a solid win and not have injuries. All things considered, we have been incredibly fortunate on the injury side of things this season. Uh, it would be devastating to have a big injury late. Um, so we might just let the clock burn for most of the fourth quarter. It's going to be the Derek Bentley show for most of it, I would expect, as this will be the final play of the third quarter. Getting a nice block on the counter. 73 almost got us another one, but he did enough. Got us nine yards, and the clock will expire now on the third quarter. So 37 to 6, a couple of field goals given up. We can't be too upset about that. Uh, just the defense really struggling to contain the pass. So fix that in the fourth quarter, I'll be happy. As far as the rest of this game goes, we'll just be mostly handing off the football. Maybe a pass here or there, but if they can't stop the run, there's no reason to go away from it. I'd be surprised if we saw more of RJ Rivera in this game, as it'll probably just be Bentley and Goodwin trying to get some work. Uh, Maurice did take a shot on the option, but good pitch. Gets a 7. Uh, we'll see. Maybe we can catch these guys off guard with a little play action. We'll see how they run it. I don't like what I'm seeing. Right bumper might come open. X X is open. If we can get it there, it's Jody Gentry. Nobody in that area of the field. He's going to take a big shot, but <laughs> he had a long time just to run with nobody around him. Uh, I kind of got confused what was going on there. Just a massive empty zone in the middle of the field. A ridiculously good throw, uh, by at least by Maurice Tate's standards, to find him on the run in space uh, throwing across his body like that. But that does enough to get us inside the red zone, and we can hopefully just bash our head against the wall and eventually find our way there as Lionel Goodwin gets us to a third in inches. Somewhat scarily, uh, Lionel got injured there, and it's Avery Binkley in at running back, so we'll try to hand it off to him. And uh, that didn't go all that well for the safety, I think he is. Fourth and two, bruised elbow for Lionel Goodwin. And we're going to give it to Derek Bentley. Just try and keep burning the clock here. Neil coming in motion. A little Wisconsin power. Trying to follow the blockers, but they don't block well enough. So Derek Bentley will lose a yard. It's another turnover on downs for us. You don't expect to see that. Uh, at least not this often. As Smith gets a sack. Oh, I really wish we could have dropped him for a loss of like five or something. Second and 12, though midway through this fourth quarter already and they are still going for it so they're not giving up quite yet we're playing the safeties up very aggressively and there's a huge sack loss of eight they're on the doorstep again third and 20 if i can get off the line well with smith this could be devastating for the spartans can the defense do it and score themselves 10 points no wide open is rutledge she gets 17 
fourth and three, but uh, well, at least we were close. Maybe not wanting to lose the yards. They're going to elect to punt this one away. They have 201 total yards of offense, which is a real shame because we obviously just had them well under that. As I don't know who this is returning the football. Jody Gentry? <laughs> he didn't get a single block on the, the one gunner that was coming down. That's kind of a shame. At least it'll give the defense uh, more time to rest. We can just continue to hand the ball off to Derek Bentley and... I think at this point, 2.30 left in the game. We can just go ahead and start to burn this clock out. No reason for us to do anything more. Try again to just avoid the injuries. We want to hold them to these 201 yards and six points. Can't risk giving up more than that. But I'm also not just going to need this out. Uh, see what we can do. Big power eye. Derek Bentley, <laughs> he's going to lose five yards. and It's fourth and six again. And I had to take a timeout because I was looking for the right play for this one. We'll see what kind of arm Bentley has on this play as he's got to try to get it away. That's a, that was supposed to be a pass back to the quarterback. But uh, just he needed, he needed like another quarter second of blocking. So it's another turnover on downs. We have actually not yet seen that play in the playbook work a single time. I'm still optimistic that it will work eventually, but... Obviously, it hasn't happened yet as they will run up the middle. And maybe they'll be good enough to actually burn the clock. M maybe not. They took a timeout as uh, Brian Carey got the... Uh, Brian, sorry, as Brian Kelly got the carry on that one. A little screen. Green gets the stop. They're going to take another timeout. They're two for nine on their third downs. Uh, that's not all that promising for them. They're going to go for it here on third and ten. I actually might have been offside. They're going to go with a screen. Whitfield gets the stop for a loss of four. I'll take the timeout. Why not? Let's force them to punt it towards jo Jody Gentry. I don't think he'll get the chance to return it necessarily. Um, but we can at least think about it. As No, this one's just going to bounce into the end zone for a touchback with 15 seconds on the clock. We tried to show about at the end of the last drive. It didn't work. We're going to cut our losses there. Take the knee. We'll take the free 10 XP that might have helped us. If we had been kneeling on all of these games, uh, that would have been a tremendous difference because it might have leveled us up. And who knows? Maybe we wouldn't have gotten screwed over in the recruiting game. But, you know, that's in the past. This is a win. 10 and 1 on the season at the moment with one game left in the regular so we made it to double digits, which is huge for us as uh, it was just kind of a dominating win. Didn't feel like there was a whole lot that they could do there. They got two decent drives, but the defense it was able to figure it out and shut it down and hold them to field goals. Offense did solid enough. Maurice a little bit too slow passing the ball early in the game to really be an impact player in my eyes. But uh, he did enough at the end of the day, made a few throws and... Uh, Gets us to a nice 37 to 6 win. Well, it ends up being a really solid game. Uh, they actually outpassed us 196 to 158 because of how bad we were at uh, stopping the pass down the stretch. But, uh, and, well, they had more first downs than us. Held them to 36 on the ground to our 160. We won the turnover battle, so we're now just like minus four on the season. Means we still have a chance to go positive, but I wouldn't hold my breath if I was you guys. Uh, really strong first half. Didn't really need to do a whole lot in the second half. Uh, and we definitely took our foot off the gas, but still a really good victory. Held them to two field goals, both coming in the third quarter off of some really big plays from them. So I'm definitely happy with that. Very happy with the way the defense played besides those two outlier, like couple of plays or the, the big passing onslaught. Um, just really solid. Maybe enough to help RJ continue the weird out-of-pocket Heisman campaign. On top of all of that, we also level up, which is really nice. So let's just go ahead and put that level up into... Uh, well, we should just do our uh, locksmith now because it hurt us in the past. I'm not going to let it hurt us in the future. So we are maxed out now on our recruiting tree. It's going to be time to just start going gung-ho on the uh, the game management side of things. And hopefully that makes us a little bit better in, in games. The clutch would be really nice. The big game would be nice. The light of fire all could be really, really important. And uh, helping the team play better in those big situations. We can go ahead and advance the week now, though, to week 13. Final regular season game against Maryland. We know that there was some chaos. There's a chance the number two team in the country fell. 
I'm very excited to see what happens here. Um, but I don't know. Still uh, deep in my heart, I'm hurt about the recruiting. Desmond Causey, the 70 uh, overall defensive tackle, is committed to Wisconsin. Not a big deal. A couple of guys ready to visit. Uh, we're still ranked in the top five. That's good. We're number two in the country. Ooh, some spicy stuff must have happened. Isn't it possible that both Cal and USC, or both Stanford and USC lost? It's very much possible. USC loses on the road at Tennessee. Uh, Stanford loses at home by those two touchdowns to Cal. That puts us at second behind the only team that has beaten us, who is the unanimous number one in the country. Texas at number three. The Longhorns supposedly back and stealing our commits. I won't have it. We are going to try to obliterate them. Anything else that we can have happening? Michigan lost. That's right. Forgot about that one. Georgia at number 12 loses for the second week in a row at number 12 Army, which is uh, just an interesting matchup. Uh, anybody dropping out? LSU, Iowa State, Penn State, probably all taking losses. Uh, how's, uh, how's it look in the media poll or the college football playoff poll? Second in the media. This says BCS. I just haven't gotten around to changing it to say CFP playoff. But uh, sitting in second in everything. So a unanimous number two. And our one loss is to the number one. We still are probably hoping that Auburn wins out. But it's not the end of the world if they take a loss at this point. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed this one, let me know by hitting the like button. Subscribe if you haven't done that already. And then down in the comments, I want to know if you guys think that RJ Rivera wins the Heisman. I believe he's still number one in the polls. He's definitely not the best player in college football this year. He's not the most deserving. I don't even know if he's the most deserving on our team, especially considered uh, Smith is up to 25 sacks on the year. 25. Let that number sink in for a second. But I'm curious if you guys think that he ends up winning it because everything that looks like it's supposed to go our way this season has at the very last second absolutely turned the opposite direction and has truly hurt us. But who knows, maybe this is the one thing that we get going good for us. After all that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to my TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and our community Discord, as well as the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys, wherever you are. Have a good night and have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.